Hello, I'm David Wormsey. Today I'm looking at hover effects for the Beaver Builder photo module. And I've created a template with some examples. It's part of my Beaver Junction plugin. So if you have that installed, you can just drag these into your page audition them and then things that you don't want you can throw away but of course you don't need my plugin this is simple css so i've included all of the css that is used on this page okay let me just quickly go through the types of effects so we've got some transform effects here we've got various filter effects including combined filters we've got a couple here which are using keyframe animations which i found on codepen I quite like them, so I included them. I've got some box shadow on hover effects here, another movement one, and finally some clip path effects. So we could go on endlessly with creating various different versions of this. But what I want to do in this video is to show you how you can just change the effects here to get it to how you like and where you might want to go if you want to extend upon these effects further. So to do that, I am going to use my demo site, which has got a light version of Beaver Builder on here. And obviously it's got my plugin installed, so I can just drag in the template. It's under rows, under custom rows and here we are image hover effects so let me just go and place this in here okay so the idea behind this is that you don't necessarily keep those in place as they are with the individual CSS which you'll find under the advanced tab and placed here the idea is that you will alter these to how you want this you might even want to take out the CSS and put it in your images here so you can try it on your own images once you've got it the way that you want, you probably want to use that globally throughout your site. So you want to place the CSS somewhere else rather than keep it there. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. You just need to put in your own class selector before each of the rules. So let's say we want this one. What I would do is to just make sure that I go in and put in whatever class selector name I wanted. I think I'll just call this Bob. It's not the best of names. So I've just put in Bob there, make sure I've got a space, make sure I've got the dot and put it in each of the rules when I'm quite, quite happy with how that is. Then what I do is I would just simply cut and paste this into the area that I wanted and make sure that each of my photo modules contain the class of Bob. So it'd be referenced. And then I would go off and normally I tend to put things into my child themes styles.css file, which usually I kind of organize, but it's entirely up to you. You could put it in the customizer. You might even want to put it in the Beaver Builder global settings. If it's up to you entirely, I mean, you can leave them in the individual modules. It's just a duplication of all of the code. Okay, that's that done. Let's uh, look at these. So these effects here, in fact, all these effects up to here are something which I've referenced them on there, but they actually come from the Beaver Builder team. They're actually on their documentation. So they're exactly the same. I may have tweaked a few things. The one thing that I did change, and you might want to change back, is that I removed all the WebKit versions of this. So these are prefixes to make sure that it works on more browsers. But I think we've reached the point where it's probably less than 1% won't work with these effects. So for that reason, it seems a good time to get rid of this sort of duplication of code. You might disagree with me, but it, it seems like it's not needed. And particularly with a hover over effect now where we are, where it's not essential as such because it doesn't work on mobile devices anyway, I've decided to cut that out. So that's generally been my rule on this. Let me go over here. Right, let's just quickly talk about how you can change things, just what the CSS does. Um, not much to say on this. This content hidden means that this zoom out effect doesn't uh, zoom out beyond the module, if you like. So it's contained within the box. That's the, the basic idea behind keeping that overflow hidden there. Um, the things that you can change here are obviously the transition time, which is that here it's half a second and, and how that eases out and we've got that in two places obviously for the hover in effect and for when it goes back to its natural state so you can change either of these you can change the scaling of the image so you can move that up or you could start the other way and have the scale 
up in the natural, but that's what the next one is. So it's pretty much the same thing. With this one, we are just working from the opposite position. So we're scaling up here and you can set what scale you want it. So it's set at 1.3 here and the transition time is slower for that one. Similar thing here, but we're just adding in a little bit of rotate as well here. So you can see this for yourself. It's the degrees and you can just change that degree and the amount of scale. Again, you could reverse this around. So I started with this rotated and it goes back to normal. You could swap these two around. So we have the effect working in reverse. Hope that makes sense. So it's all pretty simple stuff. I'm sure most people who watch my videos probably know all this and think I'm just wasting your time, but I know there might be some who have not seen this. Again, with our filter effects, we've got our blur straightforward on the natural setting. We've, we've got a bit of blur and then it focuses as we hover over it. You, again, you could just reverse these or increase the blur. Same thing with the grain scale. All of this kind of is pretty easy to understand. We start with it grayscale 100% and then go to zero. You can adjust those, obviously the transition times. Well, actually I'm not even gonna go into there because it's exactly the same thing. Now you can actually combine um, the effects as well. So we can, we've got contrast and grayscale working here together. And this is where I can point you to a generator that I think can be quite useful for these. So if you want to play around with these kind of effects here, if you go, to the link that I've included there. You can use a, something like this and kind of find, I don't know how you might want to change these effects, but here, that's all you need to do. You can just grab that and replace that once you've got something you like, and then, you know, set these uh, to their kind of default zero positions or whatever on this one. Again, this includes the prefix here, also the Moz one, but up to you whether you think you need it. I think the support there is now for filters, so it's probably not needed as, as it would have been when this was created, and the same with the Beaver Builder code was put out much earlier. Okay, let's go back to our example. I've just jumped ahead here. Let me move on to these two here. Now, honestly, I could spend forever playing around with a keyframe. So this is kind of keyframe animations. I will be covering a lot more of this kind of stuff with some transition effects that I want to do, some kind of motion effects uh, later. Um, this is just a couple of examples which I've stolen. I've referenced them over here. I just gave you a sneak preview. So these are amongst these, but again, pretty much one I didn't include was this circle and variations of the very same stuff that I'm using from the Beaver Builder team. So you could take a look at that if you like. Let's go back. I'm not gonna go into detail on these two. Um, let's have a look at the box shadow here. I've covered this in another video where I use the effect here. So hopefully it makes sense to be able to uh, set the box shadow you like on the hover effect here. Now you can't see it. You could take the hover off so you can see it while you're working with it. You could again also use the same generator that I'm using here to go to the box shadow. Uh, let's find that here. And you can play around with your effect to see what you want. And then again, copy all of these values and then place them into here. So it's kind of one way of creating these effects. Um, so this one's working on hover. The box shadow appears on the hover. In this case, what I've decided to do is as you've got box shadow, which you can put in in your settings within Beaver Builder, all I've done on this one is have it so it removes those. So I'm using Beaver Builder options, the settings to put the box shadow here. It isn't in the CSS. All I'm doing is um, leaving the duration there and putting the box shadow on hover to none. So it just gets rid of the box shadow that you've put in in your options. Okay, this one, um, again, it's something which I've used on one of the other videos. So we are just using this translate here, Y. So we just need to change it to the X axis. So all that's happening on this one, let me just show you here. This one's just jumping up a little bit and that's what our setting is. So we've got that minus 10. So it's jumping up on the Y axis up 
and it's easing in a little bit with the, what's set there. Now we can just reverse that so it goes down by changing that to uh, just 10 and removing the minus. And we could swap those around so it starts from the position there and then moves into place up to us. But we can also just change this out, this Y for an X and an X here, and we can start to move things left and right as well. So I hope that makes sense. Finally, we have these and they're all pretty much the same idea. Let's have a look. We're using here clip path. Again, I've given another reference to a kind of generator. I use this a lot. So this allows you to create these clip paths, which you can just copy and paste what you have here. And let me just go back. If we do that, I've, I've created one that creates a clip path for a circle on the image itself. But I've set this at 40% here, and then I've put it to 48% on the hover so it grows bigger on this. So we're using exactly the same circle. We're just increasing the size of it in this case. But it gets a bit cooler with these other effects. Let me just go back to this one. So here we are changing with these two. We're changing the shape of them. And if I go into this one, we'll see I'm using again the clip path, but I'm actually changing it to another one. And you can kind of do that pretty easily so by just, you know, as long as you're using the same values, as long as these values match to the change version, then it's going to glide in and change its shape. So you really could spend hours uh, changing these. As long as these values here match up to the one on the hover, uh, then it's going to be fine and it's going to transform into that shape. Okay, I think that probably covers all that I need to, to say in this. There's probably a good chance that I might start to add some more of these basic hover effects to this template, any of my templates. My plugin is in a kind of alpha stage, so I may be adding all of the time. Also, it's in my plans to cover more complex uh, hover effects as well as hover effects where it includes some text or some other content that goes in that hover. Okay, but I think that's enough for this. I hope this was of use to someone. If it was, then as usual, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube because it helps me and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much for your time. Bye-bye.